Hi, YouTube family. I was just contacted by a, um, a new viewer, and her name is Kimberly, and I want to say hello, Kimberly. Namaste. Thank you so much for your wonderful email. Um, and I want you to know that you encouraged me to, to keep making videos about really, really important topics that affect we adult children of alcoholics, adult children of narcissists, and adult children of parents who have emotionally and psychologically, intellectually, you name it, physically, have abused us. And the, um, I speak specifically to the wounds that we carry as adults and how we can transcend them as um, you know, intelligent human beings in a way that serves us um, and also serves them and humanity at a, as a whole. And so um, I was asked to address the guilt we adult children of alcoholics feel and the guilt we adult children of narcissistic parents and, you know, um, the guilt we daughters of narcissistic mothers, for instance, have to experience when we really come to the realization, the really tough, tough realization that we've been manipulated and, and abused by our own parents and and how devastating that news is and how how bittersweet it is because when you begin to understand that the people that you love the people that gave birth to you or perhaps the people that if you're a foster child or you know a child that's been adopted or whatever you know um when you when you come to the realization that the people that were supposed to love you didn't, um, not in a healthy way, uh, that is quite a bitter pill to swallow because it hurts so bad because you wanted to feel like you belonged to these people. You wanted to feel like uh, you belonged to this family unit and then to wake up and realize that they didn't love you or couldn't love you in a healthy way. Um, a lot, lot of answers, a lot of questions are answered like, ah, oh, no wonder I felt this disconnect. No wonder I felt like there was this pane of glass between me and my mom or me and my dad or me and my siblings. No wonder I always felt like an alien. No wonder I felt like I didn't fit in. You know, no wonder they are incapable of loving me in an authentic way. And so that really hurts. Specifically um, addressing Kimberly's question, it's related to the guilt she feels that she was not able to save her mom. And um, that is such a common problem that we face as adult children of alcoholics or adult children of gamblers or adult children of, of people who are just ruining their lives and we try so hard to save them and part that's part of the problem because as children we became the parent we had to parent our parents because we saw that they were you know in chaotic situations and they were making messes out of their lives so what happens is we are eh, we're void of a childhood because now we're mothering our mothers or we're 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 mothering our fathers or we're mothering our siblings and so um, we lose out on a childhood and suddenly we're expected to have to deal with very adult-like situations and, and we're not prepared for that. Um, and what we do is we sort of like think in our head like, well, if I can get mom to stop drinking, uh, then she'll see value in me. If I can get mom to stop drinking and I save her, you know, then she'll, she'll love me. And then she'll accept me. And then we'll have this kind of like um, Gilmore, Gilmore girl kind of relationship um, uh, with, you know, between uh, whatever, Lorelai and whatever her daughter's name is. I forgot. But um, worry. But anyway, that's sort of like what we yearn for as especially daughters of mothers who are unable to love us. We yearn for that connection and it never happens. And, and here we are, 45 I'm 50. I'll be 50, and um, you know that connection is never has never really been created. So there's no bond, and um, so it's very difficult to have to deal with that. What helped me on my journey is to understand that I can have empathy. I can have empathy for anyone in my family who is an alcoholic, or anyone in my family who is doing really bad things that are hurting them and their chances at being successful and happy. I can have empathy for them, but I don't have to have guilt because it's not my, I didn't cause the alcoholism. I don't 
I didn't cause the person that I love to do dysfunctional things. I didn't create the circumstances that that um, allowed the people that I love to think poorly of themselves and others. I didn't create those situations, so I have no, feel, I have nothing to feel guilty about. So that when I learn to differentiate the different emotions that I'm experiencing, when I learn the difference between pity and love, when I understand that I can pity someone and wish them the best, and that um, without thinking that I'm in love with them and I have to save them, when I recognize that I can have great compassion as an intelligent, open-minded woman for the people I love and I can wish them well and I can have empathy for the choices that they're making without feeling responsible for the choices that they're making. That is like so freaking validating and so freaking freeing because it's like, wow, you know, like I can love someone and accept that they're screwing up their lives. I can love someone and have great compassion for them with that feeling guilty because they're screwing up their life. Um, another very freeing thought for me was when I realized that um, in terms of the law of attraction, like that's a lot of, that's hokey pokey for a lot of people, but you know, I found that when, when, when I was at my worst, that's when I summoned great desire. When everybody walked away from me and I, I was taking care of my three children, you know, on my own. I was so terrified, but it was then that I found the ability to ask, you know, God, please help me. I have to get out of this situation. I need help. Like send someone fast, you know, or whatever. But what I realized was that it was in, in those moments that I was at my worst and I was, I was also my most humble and I was also the most allowing for change to come. And it was in, then I was able to look out, you know, and, become the eye in the sky like I like to say in one of my strategies with my clients is become the eye in the sky and see it from a very broad perspective what's happening um, on a quantum level what was happening was that being so low being clinically depressed and all and suffering from panic disorder what was happening was I was creating tremendous desire for something more now if people had enabled me during that time or if or if I had had a lot of help then I might not have gotten to the point where I was that humble that I was like, something's going to change right now because my life can't keep going on like this. This is nuts. You know, so it was in my worst moments that I developed great desire for more. So I'd like to speak to anyone who is, who is suffering with allowing someone that you love to suffer. Like, don't take them out of that place. Let them hit rock bottom. Let them suffer because it is in the suffering um, that humility comes. And, you know, biblically it says that the humble and the meek shall inherit the earth. And um, what I think that speaks to is like when you finally get humble, like you realize that you have to rely on self and you have to take care of yourself. You have to be a decent human being. And what you give out is what you get back. And when you're able to resonate with that, when you're able to get to that level, that vibration, you begin to inherit the kingdom of earth right here, the kingdom of heaven right here on earth. Like your world opens up for you. Like you start being kinder and then people are kinder to you. You start being generous and then suddenly the world is generous to you. You start accepting people and suddenly people are accepting of you. You have more acceptance of self. You have more acceptance of other people. Um, ultimately the goal is to get to a place where you can accept people even when they're not accepting you that you can understand that they have their soul has their own journey they were born in a different time and space their their purpose in our lives was to to get us to where we are you know our mothers were not they just didn't have the same opportunities that we have and so you know I bless everything you know my mom was born in the 40s and and her dad was in the war and you know, they were listening, you know, she was preparing for, you know, air raids, you know, in school. And so there was, that was a very dank vibrational energy system that our moms were born into. And so I was born in the 60s, a little bit later than her. And so that was better. And my children are born in the 80s and the 90s. And so, you know, they're a lot, they're born into different energy fields. And so, you know, each generation is supposed to learn from the, 
from the um, the one prior, and I think that's what's happening. So to my new my new friend Kimberly out there in YouTube land, and to my Nicoles and to my Simonas and to my Sherrys and and to my Naomi's and to uh, to all of you out there who are struggling to gain some type of understanding um, about how to transcend the various emotions that that show up in us on our road to recovery. Um, be careful that that when you when you look at mom or you look at dad, someone in your family that you've kind of broken away from, for your own se uh, sense of safety and emotional freedom and um, clarity and love of self. Be careful that when you look over your shoulder and you look at them and you start to feel negative, that you don't tend to throw all of those emotions into one box called guilt. You know, when we learn, have to learn to differentiate the various levels of emotions and the, the, the rainbow of emotions that there really are out there. You can have empathy and you can have compassion and you can feel sad and you can feel um, um, sort of like a great loss. You know, um, you can have compassion and all those things. You can feel those things, but you need to differentiate them so that you just don't look over your shoulder and just feel like crap, like, oh, damn, you know, I wasn't able to save her, so I feel guilty. No, dear one, it's not your job to save your mom. Um, you did the best that you could. It's your job to now take whatever happened in your past and to make the best life experience that you possibly can. And it sounds like you are. You're an amazing woman, and um, you're learning, and you're putting all these lessons to to um, to, to work in your life, and, and you're, you're raising your vibration, so you're breaking the cycle. What's better than that, dear one? I say fly, fly, fly. My name is Lisa A. Romano. I'm a life coach for adult children of alcoholics and adult children of narcissistic parents. And, and it has been my pleasure to release this video to you today. Namaste.